Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barn1197. As always, I thank you guys for checking out my video. All right, guys, quick little video that I want to try and put in perspective for people who think the best way to have their savings work for them is the old way that we were taught in school about how to get a job, put your money into a savings account, accrue interest, and um, you'll be fine later in life. And I'm going to basically show you how that is not the case. This video is going to basically be for people who really don't know what's going on. So I highly recommend you watch this with somebody who may not believe in what's going on or may not even be aware of it. Because there's plenty of us out there. I was one of those people as close as 2011. So before that, I had no idea what was going on. So I can understand why the majority of people would just have no clue because politicians will never tell you this. Banks will never tell you this. Uh, the media will never tell you this. And unless you f have yourself associated with somebody who is familiar with this or you stumble across it yourself, you're probably never going to know. It's like being born and you get put up for adoption as an infant. And you grow up thinking the people that adopted you are your parents. You'll never search for your original parents because you didn't know about it. So that's how they can get this information going for long periods of time without people ever knowing. So knowledge is power. Keep that in mind. So when you're in school, they basically have the old expression of you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you can teach a new one. So they love to program people at an early age. Because we're very naive, we're very trusting, and uh, we're sponges waiting to absorb information. So we look at our teachers and our television shows as ways to learn things, and they take advantage of this, unfortunately. And one of the many lies that they teach us, or misinformation, whatever you want to title it as, is they try and teach you that if you put your money in a bank, you will do well in life later on. Now, first of all, we have to understand there's a difference between currency and money. What you're holding in your hand, um, I don't have anything near me, unfortunately, but a dollar bill, especially if you live in the United States Corporation, a dollar bill is no longer money. It's what's called a fiat currency, F-I-A-T, fiat. I highly suggest you look that up. Since 1971, the world was taken off the gold standard, and basically since 1933, we've really been taken off the gold standard. And we originally went from gold-backed money to silver certificates. If you look at an old dollar, um, if you have a dollar bill from like the 1950s or before that, you'll see it'll say silver certificate, redeemable on demand, which means you could have gone to the bank at that time and gotten that much amount of silver for that particular certificate. Now you see your dollars no longer say silver certificates, they say Federal Reserve notes. The Federal Reserve is a, basically a private owned bank owned by shareholders, which they don't mention who they are. So we basically have to pretty much speculate, although we do understand who some of the people are, like the Rock, Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and other very wealthy families are in charge of the Federal Reserve System, which basically, in a nutshell, without going into f big details, loans the United States government this money that we, the people, have to pay back plus interest. Now, since your currency is no longer backed by anything, there's no fiscal responsibility. Now, what does that mean? Well, back in the days when gold was backing the dollar, it meant for they had to mine that gold and have that gold available to create a certain amount of dollars, which means if you didn't have the gold, you couldn't create the money. So it basically kept in check how much that you could actually print. Now, of course, it wasn't a one-to-one -one ratio, but it still kept things relatively in check. Since 1971, and they took the world off the gold standard, our country, because the world currency is the U.S. dollar, it's called the Petro dollar, P-E-T-R-O dollar. I highly suggest you look that up as well. But since that particular time, there is nothing backing the U.S. dollar. In other words, instead of being responsible and saying, well, I can only make as much currency or money at the time 
with how much gold I have, since they took that away from it, now they have nothing backing it up, nothing to prohibit them from prohib from printing money to infinity. So that's why you're seeing billions, then trillions of dollars in deficit, because they are basically creating money like a printing press. The only difference is nowadays, instead of even printing the majority of it as physical money or the currency that you have in your wallet, they put numbers in a bank. So you have to be understanding the difference between currency and money, first of all. So that'll give you a general idea. I'm going to give you just a brief information here. There are other videos that I have on my channel, so if you're interested, please watch them because I dedicate my life trying to give this information out to help awaken the people so they no longer get taken advantage of. Because if you're watching a video like this, obviously you have concerns. Obviously you could see that countries around the world are not working the way they are the politicians are promising. And it's up to people like myself and others who care enough to share this information to help get you on the right path. Now, we can't travel it for you. We can only show you the path. It's your job to do your due diligence and research. So please recommend that. I highly recommend that. So when it comes to putting your money in a bank or currency, because that's what it is. See, even old habits die hard with me. We still are programmed to use that word money. It's no longer money. When you put your currency in a bank, first of all, there's no more interest anymore. I mean, when I was a kid, and I'm 43 going on 44 in November, you had savings account where it was 5.5 to almost up to 6% interest on the money that you had. Nowadays, you're lucky if you get three quarters of 1%. So there's hardly any interest to even be made these days. But when you leave your currency in a bank, you are actually losing value. It's not that it disappears. So let's just leave the argument. Let's say you had $10,000 in the bank and you left it there and didn't touch it. And 10 years later, you go and get that, that currency out of the bank. Now you'll still have the initial $10,000 that you had, you know, provided they didn't take all the fees out that they're now starting to charge. It's a way to steal your money. They just love to use words like taxes and fees and service charges and things of that nature. But let's just assume they didn't take anything and you have the same amount that you left in, which is $10,000. Well, if you look at the price of inflation, inflation basically is talking about how much you need to buy something. The higher the inflation, the more expensive things are going to be. That's why, for example, in the 70s, you could buy a house. An average house probably cost about eight grand. Well, the average house now probably cost about $200,000. So you see the big difference. A car in the 1970s probably cost about two to three grand at tops. Nowadays, the average car is about nineteen twenty thousand dollars Gas in the 70s was probably around 45 cents a gallon. Now, it's almost $4 a gallon. So see the difference is you're spending more of this currency to buy the same things that you need. Now, when they talk about the indexes of how the economy is doing, one of the thing, two of the things they don't factor in are food and fuel. The two major things that the majority of us spend our fiat dollars on gas to get yourself to work and to run the machines, electricity, and food, which obviously is self-explanatory. But they try and doctor the numbers because if you look at a number and you're trusting these politicians to give you the accurate information, you're going to believe what you hear on the TV because we've been taught to trust these medias. Now, this is the question I will ask any of you out there. Can you name five politicians in your lifetime, anywhere from a mayor to a president and everything in between. Can you name off the bat five politicians that you would say were nothing but pure, honorable people filled with integrity that did nothing but good? And other than even thinking of JFK, I would really basically find it difficult for anybody to think of it. And that's out of, what, hundreds of thousands of politicians over the decades going from, like, a, a little mayor to the president. And these are the people that we trust. And we see their incomes are getting higher and higher as ours are getting lower and lower. So people tend to ask myself, now I can't answer for anyone else, but people will ask me, why is it that I try and purchase physical gold and silver? Well, 
first of all, if you don't research history, you're doomed to repeat it. And one of the things I've researched about money is that the majority of the world, going all the way back to the Roman Empire, is when they started using government-funded monies, it always started out with gold, silver, copper, precious metals. And they used it as a form of money because trading would be the wonderful and ultimate way to be able to do bartering and exchanges with other people. But if you don't have something that somebody else wants or vice versa, then the trade is going to be very difficult. So that's one of the reasons why they came up with currencies and money. It's, and they figured something that is not easily obtained. In other words, they didn't want something like a tree and a leaf because you could grab any leaf off of a tree, you can grab any bark off of a tree, and then you'd be able to make as much as you wanted. So they came up with an idea of finding precious metals that you had to find in the earth, you had to process it, you had to create it into a coin, so it made it something that had value because it took man's labor to be able to get those things. After a while, you start running out of the precious metals to back up your money because you expand, your population grows, you might have wars to finance, expansions to finance, and as the landmass that you acquire expands and the people you have to pay because soldiers don't work for free, spreads everything out. And as the community gets larger and larger, you're going to have more resources needed, more schools, more roads, more health programs. Eventually, you start running out of the resources. So what they all eventually start doing is they end up extracting the physical metals from the coins. Because originally, that's what countries and um, nations use. They use coins. And what they started doing, and again, this goes back as far as the Roman Empire, they would start taking out what they would consider, it was the first government coin that was guaranteed to have 80% pure silver in their coins. And over the decades, they started extracting some of the silver from them and filling them with other metals like copper and lead, devaluing those coins. Now, they didn't tell people they did this, but eventually people get wise because if you're so, so used to a certain shape, color, weight, or for some reason somebody decides it doesn't feel right or it doesn't make the same resonating noise and they break it open, they, they basically discovered what they were doing. And that ultimately causes the collapse of a currency. And if you know anything throughout history, this has repeated over and over again. And it always ends up in a failing currency. And they always start over again. So when I get physical gold and silver, and again, I'm speaking just for myself. I can't answer for anyone else. Knowing what happens in history, knowing what always happens in history, because every fiat currency throughout recorded history that has gone from gold and silver, which is money, to a fiat system, which is where they extract the metals and extract the real, the real wealth from it, every single one of them throughout history has failed. So we're either going to be the, the exception to the rule by doing the same exact thing there you've all done throughout history, or we're going to follow the same path. Now, if you're a betting person, you would probably bet on the fact that if we're doing the same thing that every currency and every money has done throughout history, and they ultimately failed, well, chances are we're going to fail as well. That's why you're seeing things getting very expensive. That's why you're seeing all these job losses. That's why you're seeing your money is not buying what it used to buy. It's not that things are getting more valuable. It's the dollars that they print because it's not backed by anything. You need more of it to make the purchase. They want you to stay poor because if you're poor, you are easily controlled. That is why there are millions of people on government assistant programs like food stamps, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, because you can control the masses by giving them little bits and pieces of crumbs. They don't want independent free thinkers. They don't want people to acquire wealth and be independent because then they cannot control you. So that is why you'll see these politicians always trying to give you these little things, which may seem beneficial, but for the little they give you, you'd be amazed at how much they prevent you from ever happening.
and ever getting. So you probably get from the governments 1% of the potential you could have if you didn't have them giving you those little, little trinkets to keep you happy and keep you in solitude, keep you in poverty. Because today's currency is all about debt. Money cannot be created unless somebody borrows it. It's like a Ponzi scheme. You have to keep having participants in it to keep it going. When it comes to putting your currency in a bank, as inflation rises, as they print more and more money, which devalues the ability, it devalues that currency, the money that you have or the currency that you have loses its purchasing power. And as a matter of fact, since the Federal Reserve opened in 1913 till today, we have lost approximately 94% of our purchasing power because of what they are doing. It's basically made to keep very small amounts of people in high amounts of wealth and controlling the masses with poverty and debt. And that's why you most likely to buy products and necessities, tend to use credit cards, borrow money, have loans. Now here's something you need to know about when money is created. Banks can create money out of thin air. For every certain amount that you borrow, they are allowed by law to add up to sometimes even more than this, but an average of 10 times the amount that you borrow in just typed up numbers. So if you borrow a thousand dollars, they can create 10 times that amount in invisible numbers. And this is allowed by the government and then distribute that out. Now you'll think, well, maybe that's a good idea. Why is that a problem? Well, think of it this way. When you get a paycheck, if you work a typical nine to five job or work for the government or have your own situation, whatever, you most likely either get a paycheck or you get a direct deposit. So most people don't get cash. They don't get goods or services for their employment. They get a check or they get a direct deposit. In other words, they're not giving you anything. They're just giving you a piece of paper that says, I owe you a certain amount of money. And you put that in the bank or it's directly deposited in your bank. So they're not giving you anything. So when you go to a bank, let's say you're borrowing money, what you think is money, because that's what you're used to calling it. And let's say you need to borrow $100,000. Well, they don't say here, here's $100,000 and they give you 100,000 in, in actual dollar bills. They give you a check or again, direct deposit into your account. So they are scheming you. They are giving you nothing but numbers. Now, when you have to pay it back, you can't just give them, oh, I'm going to type some numbers in and give it to them. Or I'm just going to write a check that's not backed by anything. You have to work for that money, get those dollars, pay back in physical dollar bills by depositing it into your bank account, plus the interest. So think of that as the scam. The banks are giving you nothing but basically an empty promise that's usable that you have to work for to pay back plus interest. Now, here's the part they'll never tell you because, you know, if you ever watch TV, especially in the past recent years, they try and scare you with uh, the fiscal cliff, the debt ceiling and all that. Oh, we're going to go over the fiscal cliff because it sounds scary. And if you don't know what's going on, you're easily manipulated. Now, basically what they're trying to tell you without actually telling you is when you borrow money, and I'm talking about the government, when governments borrow money from the Federal Reserve System, which is a private owned bank, not part of the United States of America, just because it has the word federal in it doesn't mean it's working for the government. I mean, Federal Express has the word federal in it. It's not a government owned entity. But when they borrow money, the Federal Reserve is basically not giving them anything but numbers. They don't create money other than the principal amount. Now, the principal amount is what you borrow. So like I said before, if you borrowed $100,000, that's the principal amount. Now, they don't include the interest, which is extra. 
So if you buy a house for $100,000, by the time you pay all the interest, you've probably paid about three hundred to 350000 altogether. Now, here's the thing that they'll never tell you. Let's say there is a billion dollars on the planet. They only create the principal amount. They don't create the future money that they call interest. So let's say they've only created a billion dollars worth of actual physical currency, dollar bills. And you go to the bank and you borrow all of it, all one billion. And they say, here you go. Here's all of the money in the world, one billion dollars. Now you have to work it off and pay it back plus interest. Well, if they only create the principal amount and they don't create the interest, which is future money, how do you pay it back? It's impossible. And that is why when they talk about things like the fiscal cliff and raising the debt ceiling, what they're telling you in a nutshell for people who don't know the scam is we've reached the limit of how much money is created. We've borrowed that money. And we have to pay it back plus interest. And since the interest part does not exist, we have to borrow more money to create more money to pay for that interest, which creates in turn a higher interest to pay that back. Now, if that sounds confusing, think of it this way. Think of it like you have a credit card and you have a thousand dollar credit limit. And you spend, you're, you lose your job, so you're buying food and gas and all your necessities with that credit card. You max out the $1,000. Now, since you lost your job, you really can't afford to pay it back. So you call the credit card company and say, I have a $1,000 limit. I've reached and maxed my credit cards out. I've reached the limit. Um, I lost my job. I can't pay. I don't know what I'm going to do. And they turn around, the bank says, instead of saying, okay, we're going to cut up your credit cards and we're going to have to take $1,000 worth of your stuff or you're going to have to find a way, they say, okay, we'll give you $2,000. We'll extend you. We'll double your amount. So you think, wow, that's great. I now have $1,000 more. No, you don't. You have $1,000 worth of credit. You think of that as, wow, I have $1,000 more to spend. So what do you do? You buy more stuff with that credit card, and now you go from $1,000 debt plus interest to now $2,000 in debt plus the interest on that, which obviously is going to be higher. So you go back to the bank and say, hi, I've maxed out my credit card again. It's now $2,000. I don't have the money to pay for it. And they turn around and say, okay, we'll double it again. We'll give you $4,000. So you think, wow, I've just come into $2,000 worth of money. No, you didn't. You've got credit for that amount. Same thing happens with the country. Every time we borrow money and we have a deficit, all we're doing is borrowing money. So let me ask you this. This country, the United States of America Corporation, is approximately $17 trillion in debt. That's the numbers they tell you. But let's just assume they're, they're being 100% in, um, honest because that's what politicians do is be nothing but honest. But let's just assume 17 trillion is the amount. Now that's 17 trillion in debt. That means they've borrowed 17 trillion dollars from the Federal Reserve. May I ask anyone out there who believes we're in a recovery or doing great, how are we a wealthy nation when everything that we have is based on borrowed money that we have to pay back plus the interest? The interest alone is about $350 billion a year. Now, I'm just roughly estimating. But since that amount does not exist, the Ponzi scheme has to continue. So it goes higher and higher and higher. And they print more and more and more. And prices of products go higher and higher and higher. Until one day, you wake up and gas is $30 a gallon, and bread is $50, a gallon of milk is $29.95. You will never be able to afford that, and it all comes crumbling down. Now, when it comes to precious metals, at least in my concern, I think of it as, as insurance. It's a way to store your wealth. It is not meant to make you rich. If you are getting physical gold and silver thinking, oh, I'm going to reap in all the money and I'm going to be wonderful, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons and you're going to be very disappointed. 
because what it basically does is it doesn't make you rich. It keeps up with inflation. So here's your money in the bank, that $10,000. As inflation goes up and up and up, see the difference between the 10,000 and inflation? See the gap? You have to fill that up with more of this. But what happens is if this is precious metals and this is inflation, what it's doing is it's basically going to keep up with it. Unfortunately, it's not the case right now because they're basing prices on SLV and GLD. SLV and GLD is the paper price. Now, the paper price is not actual physical metals. They're basically making promises and saying, well, we have the physical metal and we're selling stocks so you can have a share in it. So you're not owning the physical metal. You're just owning a, a certificate that says you own that amount. Now, here's where they trick you. Let's say you're going to buy a car. Okay, here's the car. You go to a place and it's $10,000 for that car. You pay them the $10,000. You think you're going to get the car home. And this is what they give you. They give you car stock. Let's call it CS. It's car stock. You think something's wrong because wait a minute i went to buy a car i want the physical car i don't want a piece of paper that says i own that car but that's what they do with the slv and gld they're to basically telling you that we will hold your car we'll give you a certificate that says you own it but you can't drive it you can't use it you can't see it and that's why the federal reserve has not been audited in probably over 50 years they're supposed to be audited every year. Why? To make sure they have the gold to back up the money that they're printing. Anyone ever wonder why the Federal Reserve or ask a politician or ask a news media outlet why they never cover the fact that the Federal Reserve has not been audited since approximately the 1950s? So here's the thing about that car stock. You're thinking you're buying a car, you give them $10,000, and instead of driving home with the car, they give you this car stock and say you own a piece of that car. Here's where they get you. Now, the number will vary, and it's, and it's hard to prove, but even if it's 2 to 1, the average is 100 to 1 ratio. In other words, they'll take this same $10,000 car stock that you think that you bought and you own that car. They'll give it to 99 other people, all thinking they own that same piece of that car or the whole car. So that's what they're doing by manipulating the prices of gold and silver is basically what they're doing is, is they're telling people, well, if you want to buy silver, get some SLV stock, or if you want gold, buy the GLD stock. And we have that amount of whatever amount of ounces in paper gold. We have it physically in a bank, but we'll give you a certificate that says you own that gold or you own that silver. But then they send the same certificates out to dozens of other people if not hundreds and even if it's two to one that means there are let's just say the bare minimum two to one that for every one ounce there are two people claiming it so in other words basically what's happening is they don't have the physical to back up what they're selling and as long as people don't wise up to this fact and say i want my gold and i want my silver they can continue this scam of tricking people. So you're being lied to, you're being deceived, and they're stealing your money by basically giving you a piece of paper. And we're so used to it, we're being conditioned to think, well, that's just the way things are. So when I get my physical gold and silver, I use it as protection. Because again, if we go back to the bank account, let's say you had $10,000 in the bank and you left it untouched for 10 years. Let's say I bought $10,000 worth of gold and silver and left it for 10 years. Well, since you had dollars and inflation has risen because prices have risen in a decade, just look at what prices are for the items you get now 10 years ago and you'll see the difference. So now you've lost purchasing power. You still have the same amount, $10,000, but it takes a lot more of it to buy things because of inflation. Now with precious metals, Look at, for example, 10 years ago, the, I, the price of gold 10 years ago, which would make it around 2004, was roughly about $300 to $350 an ounce. Right now, it's over $1,300 an ounce. So that's not making me rich. What it's doing is, is it's keeping up with inflation. So as the dollar rises, the precious metal value is rising as well, keeping you in line.
It's not all of a sudden, here's inflation, then gold goes like this, and you make a profit. It's keeping up, which is better than here's your money in the bank, here's inflation, see how it separates. So they want you to not know what's going on. They want you to be in the dark. Now, I'm not saying that there's any guarantees in life, physical gold and silver, because it's based on the paper prices. They manipulate it. They do it all the time. So if they want to lower the price of gold and silver, all they have to do is dump millions of these paper ounces onto the market, which people happily buy up, participating in this fraud and this scam, because there are some people who will profit from it. And this is how they keep the scam going. They let people earn a few couple of thousand dollars while they earn billions and destroy the country. So if you think your little profit that you're making buying these paper stocks is good for you and your family? Well, if it ultimately destroys the nation and the nation goes bankrupt again, which by the way, it went bankrupt in 1871 and it went bankrupt for the last time in 1933, same year they happened to confiscate gold. You may want to research that, but if it ultimately destroys the country, how does that help your family? You have to think long term. And most people don't do that. They basically teach you to be in the now, in the moment. They don't want you to research. They basically, these are what politicians and banks and media really want you to say. Trust us. We'll do the right thing. We'll take care of you. All you have to do is sit back and just trust in our word. And that's fine if we had people that were doing the right thing. But if you think this country or any country around the world is going in the right direction based on our leadership, you're either getting paid a hell of a lot of money to agree with that st statement or you're part of the problem. So I hope this educates you enough to just start wanting to research this stuff because it ultimately is protection for your family and for yourself. And if you want to trust in politicians and media and banks to do the right thing, good luck to you. All I have to do is say, look at their track record. Are they doing things that are helping the masses or are they doing things to help the very few who make more and more of this fiat money and separate between the lower and upper classes, destroying ultimately the middle class, which means losing your independence. And that's how they end up ultimately taking over countries and mistreating people in ways that can go as far as genocide. Now, I'm not saying that's a guarantee or that's going to happen, but do you want to take the chance of it ever getting that way based on the fact of looking the other way? My name is Chris. This is Barn on 11970. This is my channel. I dedicate it to trying to get information to people to save themselves, protect themselves, and keep yourself out of being lied to. If you appreciate that, give it a thumbs up. Share it. Watch it with people you care about. Get this message out and learn. Do your research. Get yourself a Black's Law Dictionary. Get yourself a constitution. Learn about what's going on in government. Be a part of it because they're supposed to be representatives of us. And it doesn't look like they're representing us in the way that we want. And if that's the case, it's our job to fix that problem and do it in a peaceful way. Otherwise, they'll just take more and more advantage of us until one day we have nothing left and then it'll be too late. Don't ever let that happen. Thanks for watching guys. Enjoy your day and don't forget to have your trolls spayed or neutered. Peace.